What's up, Bam? This is your boy Brent Knoll. And this is your Mac Daddy Maximus. Uh, BG Design Brent, they call him in the street. Gluteus Character Design Maximus. That's right. And today we're gonna learn how we made this looping animation. Ah, cool, it's like a GIF, but for Instagram. Dude, animated content like this is a great way to get eyes on your work, especially if you're trying to get into the industry. Exposure, exposure, exposure. Hey, if you're new to BAM, it goes like this. You guys submit art, we's guys redraw the art. Yeah, kind of like if it was a real animated show on television. Let's peep today's art from Arthur and Nissa. Whoa. Sick. Yeah. This girl kind of has like a gorilla's vibe. Funky, like she's doing it to me at my eye holes. Mm -hmm. And the lizard girl is really rad. It's a good character dynamic, a person and a lizard. And original. Yeah, it's very original. It's kind of got that vibe like those two characters from Tank Girl. Booga, Booga, and Tank Girl. Booga and Tank Girl. Does yeah. Tank Girl have a name or is it just Tank Girl? Uh, I never read it. Let's make some groovy art based on this. Yeah. For this episode, I want to put these two girls in a car and make a looping animation of them driving. I love when they do that in anime. It's like a still shot, but they've got those vibrating effects that make it appear to be moving. Yeah, dude, it's such a cool look. And I'm going to start by designing a car for them. I made sure to get a lot of reference for the type of vehicle I want to use. Ah, it's like it's like a truck with uh, tank treads on it. Yeah, dude, it's called a half track, and I like it because it has this kind of Mad Maxi vibe. We need to design this truck with an open top. If I drew a cab like this M3 here, we're never going to be able to see the characters. Windows are sort of a problem in animation because they can obscure your characters. You'll see a lot of times that artists will design cars with enormous windows so we can see all the acting clearly. All right, this is perfect. We got enough space for the characters. Being a character designer is like being a casting director. You're designing an animated actor. Check this guy out. You see how much the head and the hands are moving around? This is where humans look when they want to read someone's emotion, facial expression, and hand signals. This means that these areas require the most animation and the most attention to design. Yeah, and that means head silhouette is really important. Can you guess whose head this is? You guessed it. Beloved childhood character, wet dog food. You should push around the negative space and the positive space to create a more iconic head. Fly as hell. Let's put these characters into a car. Sick dude, this is a great starting point for our animation. Brent, have the f do we animate a car? Well, the first step is to start tracing. We designed and painted all this in Photoshop, which is pixel-based art. But Adobe Animate uses a vector, so I have to trace it all by hand. I want this animation to be 16 frames long, with lots of little details that animate. And I'm going to organize all that using symbols. The symbol is the most powerful tool in Animate CC. It can hold art or frames of an animation, and you can animate the symbol itself. It sounds confusing, but check this out. I can convert this tire into a symbol, then I go inside it, and now it has its own timeline, independent of the main timeline. And I can add a few frames of tire rotation. When I click out of it, the tire symbol will now loop inside our main timeline. This tire is pretty simple, but you can do really complex things with symbols. By adding lots of looping symbol animation, we can really make this car come alive. I'll start with a simple bounce animation. It's gonna bounce once at the beginning of the loop, kind of like the car is hitting a bump. I'm grouping these animations into something like a tree. The trunk of the tree is the main bounce the car does every 16 frames, and the branches of the tree are all the secondary effects like the hair waving, the fenders vibrating, and the flags flapping. All these symbols are four to eight frames long. These will fit really nicely inside the 16 frame loop. Animating a symbol is easy. I press F6 on the timeline, which creates a new keyframe right on the playhead. Then I move the art just a little bit and repeat creating new keyframes until I'm happy with the movement. Then I'm gonna add secondary animation. That's animating all the stuff that reacts to the bouncing of the car. I'm just gonna offset them by one frame. That way they will sort of look like they're loosely attached. Looks good. All the parts are moving independently. And just a little bit of traditional animation left. I hand drew four frames of the hair moving and then an eight frame tail loop. This was pretty fun. It was sort of like a rope. Now I'll group the car into a symbol and just make the whole thing vibrate. 
boom, now it's like really alive. Cool, how do, how do we get this onto Instagram, Brent? Export the animation as a PNG sequence. Uh. Then import it into After Effects. This is important. Reinterpret the frame rate to 24 frames a second, otherwise it's gonna play back too fast. Instagram won't take a short video, so I'm gonna make a composition that's 15 seconds long and copy and paste our animation a few times. To get it onto Instagram, I'm gonna export it as an MP4 using these settings. I'll save it to my Dropbox, and then I can find it on my phone with the Dropbox app. You can hit this export button here, and then load it to your Instagram. Notice that I sized the artwork into a square. You never really put like a rectangle on Instagram, right? Yeah, everyone holds their phone vertical, so having a wide picture just doesn't really work. Hell yeah. We've posted on Instagram. That is gonna get a thousand likes. Mm. Hey, mm. can we transition away? Yes, go for it. So why should I put my art on social media at all? When I was growing up, we didn't have great social media platforms like Vero, LinkedIn, or Google Plus. Yeah, I had to cut a tree down to make paper and print my portfolio. Nowadays, animation is accessible to anyone, including those who don't own a paper orchard. Yeah, one click and you can share your art with millions of people. Art overload. But you can use this to your advantage. Good art stands out. Social media is an economy of people's attention. You can attract more attention to your art by making your art animate. More attention, more potential art jobs for you. And more competition for me and Brent. Uh, I, I can't be teaching all these tricks on YouTube. Yeah, it's a tool that I use for like networking and stuff. Dude, I have student loans to pay off. The problem is when they learn this, the market is gonna be flooded with anime gifts. I, I, I can't do this. What have we done, dude? We only have like 3,000 subscribers. Like it's not it's gonna be a big deal. Dude. We'll put an end to that right now. Yeah. Listen, don't like, don't comment, don't subscribe, don't hit the bell. Don't send your art to bam.redrawmyart at gmail.com. Just stop. Just stop right now. It's a bad email address. Uh, please, like, I need this. Come on, please. I have so much debt. I can't compete with 4,000 subscribers, dude.